Everybody and welcome to the virtual North Wilkesboro Speedway here in Wilkes County, North Carolina, where tonight the National Racing Network is pleased to bring you the Dynamic Design 150. You can see by the looks of the cars here, this is a full-on throwback event right here. Let's uh, take a look at your quick time or follow him around for a lap as we handle the introductions and all. My name is Chris Graham with the National Racing Network. It is a pleasure to have you joining us this evening. 1987 Chevrolet Monte Carlos, 1987 Ford Thunderbirds at a very 1987 looking North Wilkesboro Speedway. We cannot wait to see this race get out under green practice has right about eight minutes or so left. Mike Bumgardner, your quick timer. He has checked in with a quick lapse time of 18.56 seconds. Second on the speedway will be the number 12 of Jackson Crowder. He's timed in 18.57 seconds. Third quick, Zane Scott. He's gonna be number one on your timing and scoring, but he's a 37 here on the screen. Third quick, 18.62 seconds. Ty Bass, again, another one. The number's different from the car in the timing and scoring. Ty Bass will say 19 in timing and scoring, but he is a fantastic. Dale Earnhardt, 25th anniversary of R.J. Reynolds. Paint scheme on that car. He is your current fourth quick timer, 18.67 seconds. Rounding out your top five. Kind of hidden there by the pit box, but that is an awesome Miller American throwback piloted by Bobby Hillen Jr. That spot belongs to Jackson Lewis. His time, 18.68 seconds. Should have a pretty good race coming up here for you tonight. 150 laps coming up here as we tick down towards the six-minute mark remaining here in practice. Cars will have five minutes to take their best of three laps. And before we hit our commercial break here, before the start of qualifying, got to say a couple of big thank yous, including to Trevor Rouge from Dynamic Designs. He's the one putting the money up here on this one, making sure that this race gets out on the air to you folks. So a big shout out to Trevor Rouge and Dynamic Designs. You can find them on Facebook by searching for Dynamic Designs. Also, got to say a big thank you to Hyper Racing, the Slide Up Podcast, and Hot Shoe Racewear for lending their support to the National Racing Network. We appreciate everything that they do for us. But let's get the commercial break out of the way here. And we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. You are watching the Dynamic Designs 150 right here on the National Racing Network. Because you got a race. Hyper Racing has technical help that will blow your mind. Online or phone line. A world-class facility that manufactures perfection. Fuel injection conversions, chassis dyno, shock service, and a massive inventory for micro sprints, lightning sprints, midgets, and quarter midgets. We have what you need and will deliver your package full of adrenaline. Hyper Racing, because you gotta race. If there's one thing every car guy hates, it's cleaning the garage. Do you want to take most of the time and hassle out of that job? Then call Zone Garage of Eastern Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Agnes and her crew will have your garage, shop, basement, or even your porch looking great all the time. With unique patterns and designs, plus the ability to incorporate your logo or any artwork, your space will never have looked better. Installation is done in one day, guaranteed, and Zone Garage offers a 20-year warranty on the top coat. 
Their coatings are durable, anti-slipped, and impact resistant. Give them a call at 570-856-6067. That's 570-856-6067 for Zone Garage of Eastern Pennsylvania and New Jersey. Yo, Scott. Hey. I'm heading out, man. You want to ride? No, I got my car, but I actually really need to go to the bathroom. Oh, you know what? I was just in there. The line is like 10 people long. You know, I think I'll just... <laughs> Dude, are you okay? You wouldn't believe what I was just thinking. I, I am definitely buzzed. Yeah, I think I will take this and I will take that ride home. Smart man. Did you see how that dog was looking at me? All right, everybody, welcome back here to North Wilkesboro Speedway down to about two and a half minutes left in practice. Mike Baumgartner, Jackson Crowder, Zane Scott, Blake Cisneros, and Ty Bass still your top five. We're gonna follow along this car of Blake Cisneros. Fantastic, Mark Martin, Win dixie throwback scheme on this one. Big kudos to the iRacing paint community. They have absolutely knocked it out of the park getting a lot of these paint schemes ready to go. We were testing this car within probably an hour of the update finishing earlier this week, and there were already cars running paint schemes from, I would say, the mid-70s all the way through to kind of current, current paint schemes on the old car, which is really kind of neat looking as well. In fact, let's see. I believe it is. Oh, there you go. There's a... Uh, Brandy Richardson in the 43, that is a Neil Bonnet throwback. I believe the one we're looking for, oh, now the car's not gonna be there on the racetrack. So let's pick up, pick back up with Blake Cisneros here. Taking a look at the comments on Facebook, seeing Bob Emmons is watching, Tiffany Tires, Nick Sandone, Jonah Meck, Pat Beeler, Jonathan Lewis is watching. We're gonna give Jonathan and Ultimate Dirt Track Products a huge shout out here. Coming up Sunday night, there's still time to register for this one. We will have the Ultimate Dirt Track Products Vintage Cup Series. That is going to be a five-week series featuring these same 1987 Monte Carlos and Thunderbirds. The only difference between the two of them, or the only uh, the difference here is this is going to be a five-race schedule. We're going to kick things off at North Wilkesboro Speedway with the NRN 150. We'll have a 150-lap race at Martinsville Speedway. That'll be the Bell Helmets Old Dominion 150. Third race on the schedule, the Ultimate Dirt Track Products Southern 100 at Darlington Raceway. We're going to follow that up with the Bell Helmets Volunteer 150 at the Bristol Motor Speedway. And then to round it all off on Independence Day weekend, we'll have the Ultimate Dirt Track Products Firecracker 200 from the Daytona International Speedway. Outstanding series. We're getting set up here. You can find all the information at our website at nationalracingnetwork.com. As time ticks off on the practice session here, they're going to get ready to roll out for qualifying. So we'll do our best to get you as many of the cars turning their laps as we possibly can here. Waiting to see who's going to be the first car out onto the speedway for qualifications. Five minutes to set your best three laps. So the drivers do sort of have a throwaway lap uh, in that they can, if you, if you make contact with the wall, you spin, you hit the grass on the inside, it's going to give you a 1X. It's going to show an incident. That lap will not count. So the smart driver is going to stop the car immediately and get it back to the pits. Even if you screw up on lap number two, you can still reset, come back out to complete your second lap in big fat air quotes. Oh, here you go. You know what? We're not going to be able to see qualifications tonight, unfortunately. First 
time in on the board is going to be the number two of Kurt Weigand, 19.07 seconds. Because unfortunately, we had to join this server as a driver, not as a watcher. So we don't get to see everybody. New quick time, Jackson Lewis. He's on the board, 18.88 seconds. Jamie Elam, second quick, 18.93. Clayton Ward, third quick at an 18.95, 18.96 for Caleb Hall in fourth. Sean Hensley in fifth position, 19.05 seconds. There you go. We'll get you the ticker at the top of the screen, at least so you can see where your favorite is checking in. Scott Fritz setting time, 19.32 seconds. Clayton Ward jumps up to the top of the charts alongside Jackson Lewis. Both of those cars in 18.88 seconds. Benjamin Easler clocking a lap in at 19.08. New quick time. Jackson Lewis jumps to the top of the charts 18.72 seconds. Cole Johnson jumps to second. He's in at an 18.87. Ward still third. Elam, Caleb Hall rounding out your top five on that one. So far, 11 cars have taken time. Only about a third of a second back to 11th place. 11th place, excuse me, Jackson Rexing. New quick time on the board. They do it again. They're stacking them on top of each other. Jackson Crowder, quick time, 18.59 seconds. Blake Cisneros jumps to second quick, 18.69. Lewis Johnson Ward, your top five. Seeing Jonathan Lewis checking in in the comments saying, what's up? Yeah, man, we are really looking forward to this race. Coming up on Sunday night. Make sure to give the video a like and a share. Let us know where you're watching from. If you have a rooting interest, make sure you let us know because we'll give them shout outs over the course of the night. Time ticking down now to 90 seconds remaining. In the qualifying session, Jackson Crowder, still your quickest at 18.59 seconds. Still have a pretty solid handful of cars that have not taken time yet, including Tommy Gossett, Ty Bass, Zane Scott, Cameron Sorrells, Jennifer Mori, uh, and also Sean O'Neill. Some of those cars, actually, they have what's called conduct scrutiny on the um, – on the qualifying we'll tell you about that in a second because we got a new quick time mike bumgarner jumps to the top of the charts 18.53 seconds that one third of a second mark only back to fifth place cole johnson top five actually now zane scott timing in fifth 18.75 seconds the one third mark back to cole johnson in sixth 18.87 Yeah, that's right. Big, big first prize for this Ultimate Dirt Track product series. The Bell RS7C LTWT. It's only taken me a week to get that one memorized. MSRP on this helmet, $1,700. And that'll be the prize going out to the series champion of the Ultimate Dirt Track products, Vintage Cup Series. Down inside of 10 seconds remaining in the qualification session. No heats, no consies, no nothing. We're going to stack them up and go racing here at North Wilkesboro in just a couple of seconds. And there you go. Qualifications are over. Show you the results from qualifying. Mike Bumgarner, your quick timer, 18.529 seconds. Less than a tenth of a second back to Jackson Crowder in the number 12. Cisneros, Lewis, Scott, Johnson, Ward, Elam, Hall, and Roosh round out your top 10. Waiting on some of these cars at the front of the field to get loaded in. In fact, none of the top five have gridded up as of yet. 
Really neat to see some of these old throwback paint schemes. We'll call them out over the course of the race. Yes, yeah, seeing the comment here from Megan Florio, we're actually going to make reference to that here in just a moment as we go through the grid. Let's get you the starting lineup. On the pole will be Mike Bumgarner, that 18 529. To his outside, another Carolina native, Jackson Crowder. Crowder not on the grid just yet. Row number two will have the 60 of Blake Cisneros and that number eight Miller American scheme of Jackson Lewis. Row number three, the number 37 of Zane Scott and to his outside, the five of Cole Johnson. In the fourth row, starting seventh, the number 55 of Clayton Ward and his outside, the number 124 of Jaylee Elam. This is the paint scheme I was telling you guys about that we were going to show you here. We'll, once we get the grid finished, we'll roll back to it. Caleb Hall starting in the ninth position. Trevor Roosh in position number 10. Row number six, I'll have Sean O'Neill and Sean Hensley. Row number seven, Brandy Richardson and Kurt Vigan. Row number eight, Scott Fritz and Benjamin Easler. Row number nine, I'll have Jackson Rexing and Ty Bass. Row number 10, Austin Smith and Connor Germain. I'm not sure that Connor's running. He's the guy putting on the whole show here. Got to say a big thank you to him as well. There's me starting 21st, so obviously we will not be out there. Tommy Gossett starting 22nd in car number 80. Row number 12, Cameron Sorrells and Jennifer Mari. So let's pick up this number 14 of Caleb Hall. You see it on the side, on the rear quarter panel there, racing for dad, the back basically behind the trunk Gary that flat back bumper part right above the back bumper says cancer sucks we want to give a big shout out tonight to Caleb Hall's dad I don't have his name here unfortunately but hopefully the boy does well for you and we wish you the best from everybody here at the National Racing Network fields already working their second to two pace laps so we're going to go green this next time by the 97 bud machine piloted by Hall of Famers, Daryl Waltrip, Neil Bonnet to his outside. Well, Mike Bumgardner's piloting the car tonight to his outside. The number 12, there's Wrangler Colors of Jackson Crowder. Pace car is in. Fields off of turn number four. Green flags in the air. We are racing at North Wilkesboro. Fantastic start for Jackson Crowder. He's going to hold the early lead down into turn one over Mike Bumgardner, who runs second. Jackson Lewis slots in third. Back up through the field just a little bit. Side-by-side -side battle there between Zane Scott and Cole Johnson for position number five. Interesting layout here at North Wilkesboro. The fast way around here in turns one and two, you can kind of see them there. Not right on the bottom of the racetrack, almost up towards that white dash line. You run uphill down the back straightaway, down through the corner into turns three and four. That's right along the bottom. And then a big downhill drop down the front straightaway making your way back to turn one. Already three laps on the board. Nice pass to the outside there by the 14 at Caleb Hall. He's going to move up to sixth. Already up three spots since the start of the race. In that cancer sucks forward Thunderbird. At the front of the field, Jackson Crowder checking out just a little bit. Call the gap eight, nine car lengths over Mike Bumgarner. In fact, it's a little over half a second as they make their way off at of turn four. That number 12 machine is fast early on. This is the battle for second between Bumgarner, Lewis, and Cisneros. Caution, caution, caution. Yellow flag is out. Caution number one on the speedway. Trouble for Cole Johnson. Let's bring up the replay here, see what happened to the number five. Yeah, just a little bit too heavy into turn one. Lost the back end. With the automatic cautions here, that kind of half spin will absolutely draw a caution here at the short tracks. <laughs> Looks like he's able to keep it going. Yes, he is. Tags in at the back of the field. We'll slide up front, pick up race leader Jackson Crowder. Will be double file restarts. Cars will have one fast repair tonight, only 20 incident points. That's not a lot to work with here at a short track. 
especially over a race distance of 150 laps. Interesting calls so far. Looks like Blake Cisneros has already entered pit lane. Well, maybe not. He may have just been right down on the line because it said he came right back out. Yeah, only a couple of seconds later. So we'll see here if I believe yeah, Blake Cisnero is still showing his running in fifth. So he was just down tight to the apron there. A full tank of fuel should last these cars for the distance. So if they had a full tank, which we are unsure of, then they should be good to go on fuel for 150 laps. The bigger issue is going to be tires. iRacing has pretty closely modeled the characteristics of the old bias ply tires in these things. The first three or four laps, they are absolute garbage and very, very difficult to drive. As the pressures get built up and the actual shape of the tire changes based on heat and air pressure, you get about 15 laps, 20 laps into a run, and you can really lay down some great laps on these tires. They do go away fairly quickly, however, so it'll be interesting to see who's going to make the pit stop for tires and how much ground can you make up once you have that fresh Goodyear Racing Eagle rubber on the machine. Still working under caution here on lap number nine. Field should see the one-to-go signal this time by the start-finish line. Yep, there you go. Lights are out on the pace car, so the field will get doubled up pretty quickly here. Crowder and Bumgarner are going to make up row number one. Crowder started on the outside, really sailed it off into turn one, and was able to take the race lead. We'll see how he's going to be able to hold on to this one. Lewis and Cisneros in row two. Scott and Richards in row three. Hall and Roosh, row four. Elam and Fritz, row number five on the restart. Crowder lets the pace car gap out just a little bit. Pace car is now off. Green flags back in the air. We are racing. Oh, man, the 97 did not get a great start. He's going to stay right with them into turn one, though. Crowder tried to force him up the racetrack just a little bit. Not going to work. Big drive down the back straightaway by Mike Bumgarner. He's going to hold in tight to the outside. Two by two by two by two. Three rows deep for the top six. They get them straightened out now. Caution flag back out on the speedway. Not sure. Don't see a reason for the yellow anyway. Let's see what we can pick up here. Yeah, nope. That's only going to give us the time, the moment of the caution. Don't see anything back in the pack, so we'll see, uh, or at least no incidents anyway. Lap number 12 coming to a close now. They'll pick up lap number 13. Take a look here. We are live on not only the National Racing Network Facebook page, also on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash National Racing Network. Easiest way to find tonight's race. Tell all your friends, nationalracingnetwork.com. Right there on our website, upper right-hand corner of the screen, there's a button that says Watch Online, and you can get tuned in to the live broadcast here tonight. Looks like we're going to do at least one more lap here. We'll give you a little bit of a hint to some of the graphics that you might be able to see here. We'll show you the stint length. Nobody has made a pit stop yet, but that'll give you an idea of who's moving where. Cars that are have a red tag next to the name, that is a Chevrolet Monte Carlo. White tags are Ford Thunderbirds, so a whole lot of bow tie power up here at the front of the field. We'll also be able to show you some lap time histories, time deltas, that kind of stuff as well. As the race progresses, especially as they move into lap traffic, that information will become more valuable to you as a viewer. So we'll do our best to keep you informed.
Once again, Fields should be getting the one to go signal this time by. There you go. The lights are off. On cue. Crowder and Bumgarner again going to make up row number one. Lewis and Cisneros in row two. Row three will have Zane Scott and Brandy Richardson. Caleb Hall, Trevor Roosh, row four. Ty Bash, Jamie Elam, row five. Fantastic duel for the lead on the last restart. Let's see if they're going to be able to do it again. Green flag is out. A little bit of a shove from Cisneros into turn one. That might have been all Mike Bumgarner needed. He's going to cross over the front of Crowder. New race leader Mike Bumgarner down the back straightaway. Cisneros and Jackson Lewis going to battle side by side for position number three. We put lap number 18 of 150 on the scoreboard. Two distinct grooves here at North Wilkesboro. The inside has the advantage in turns three and four. The outside can have a little bit of an edge in turns one and two. That's what you're seeing here. What a battle here for third. Oh, man, a little bit of trouble there for the 97. Oh, they almost made contact. Three wide down the back straightaway for position number two. Trouble for Jackson Crowder. He's going to slide back to the fourth position. The side-by-side -side duel just picks right back up where it left off, except now it's for a second. Oh, a little bit of contact. Blake Cisneros goes around. Trouble as well. Several cars involved now in turn one and two, including the five of Cole Johnson. Trouble, trouble, trouble. Let's pick up the instant replay here on Blake Cisneros. Car looped around just a little bit. Heavy contact further back in the field. Tough break. Looks like Caleb Hall may have been involved in that one as well. Let's pick up the replay from the point of view of the number 14. He saw the carnage happening in front of him. Oh, got it woed up, and then heavy contact from the 23. Trevor also for Trevor Roosh. Let's see if we can't get on board with this car. Roosh actually running back in the pack. You'll see the incident start to develop in front of him. Oh, Roosh was the car that hit. The 14. Looks like Sean Hensley, Kurt Vigan, Cole Johnson, Clayton Ward, Austin Smith involved as well. So let's go back to real time racing here. Let's take a look, give you information on anybody who has pitted. Cole Johnson currently in the pits right now getting service. Also, a stop for Blake Cisneros. Pit stop 21.53 seconds for the driver of the number 60. It's a good side-by-side -side battle with Jackson Lewis. Unfortunately, Cisneros comes out on the short end of the stick on that one. Cole Johnson making his way out of the pits now 22.63 seconds on the stop for that car jackson rexing kurt vigant uh let's see they are showing as off track times yeah only two cars electing to make the pit stop cole johnson has actually made three stops at this point Nobody at the front of the field has come into the pits just yet. Mike Bumgarner's been at the front of the field this entire race. Jackson Lewis was locked in that side-by-side -side battle. He's now going to start to the outside of road number one. So we're going to go green this time by. Zane Scott, Brandy Richardson will make up 
row number two. Jackson Crowder, Ty Bass in row three. Ty Bass up 12 spots since the drop of the green flag. Row number four will have Trevor Roosh and Scott Fritz, Jamie Elam, Sean O'Neill in row number five. Pace car's going to pull off here. Green flag back in the air. We are racing again here at North Wilkesboro. Great start at the front of the field. Jackson Lewis to the race lead. Crossing over Bumgarner into one. Here comes Jackson Crowder looking to the outside. Now he's going to try to cross over Bumgarner down to the inside. Already 26, almost 27 laps in the books. Top six single file. Side-by-side -side battle coming up a little bit further back in the pack here. We'll pick up the 28 of Scott Fritz. Oh, sounds like a little bit of contact up towards the front of the field. Caution flag is out. Yellow, yellow, yellow. That may have been for Caleb Hall and Jackson Rexing. Let's pick up the replay here. See what happened to the driver, the number nine. Oh, a little bit of contact there. Some left side loving. Oh, man, Caleb Hall gets pushed up into the outside fence again. Neat Terry Labonte, Piedmont Airlines throwback colors there for the number nine of Jackson Rexing. <laughs> Jackson Lewis got the pass made, so he's going to be your race leader. Mike Bumgarner will restart in second. Jackson Crowder, third. Give a shout out here to Zane Scott. And that number 37 machine. A little bit of right rear damage on that one. Nothing too major. Currently running in the fifth position is the number 43 of Brandy Richardson. Those Neil Bonnet colors look outstanding. Ty Bass in the GM Goodrich number three will roll off in the sixth position for the restart. Trevor Roosh in the 23. He's going to line up in the seventh position. Scott Fritz in the 28. Texaco Haviland, Davy Allison colors from the early 1990s. That car is going to roll off in the eighth position. Ninth will be the 124 of Jamie Elam. A little bit of a net glitch there, it looks like. And rounding out your top 10 will be the number 16 Dairy Queen Blizzard of Sean O'Neill. Blake Cisneros back up to the 11th position after his issues. There is the number five, another Wrangler Chevrolet piloted this time by Cole Johnson. Sean Hensley in the number 23. Darrell Waltrip, Mountain Dew Colors. He's going to roll off 13th. Kurt Weigand in the 22. Man in Black, Good Wrench Chevrolet, 14th. Clayton Ward will restart 15th in the number 55, 605 racing entry. Austin Smith in the 24, another of those 605 cars. That one almost has a little bit of a Ron Bouchard feel to it. That one's pretty cool. Like the paint scheme on that one. Caleb Hall will restart 17th after his issues. And there is the 0-2 of Benjamin Easler. Jackson Rexing in the number nine. Going to start right behind him. Lights are out. We're going back to green flag racing. Battle of the beer wagons at the front of the field. Lewis to the inside, Bumgarner to the outside, pace cars in, green flags coming back out. We are underway again here at North Wilkesboro. Very good start that time for Jackson Lewis. He's going to hold on to the race lead comfortably over Mike Bumgarner. Bumgarner, he's going to be in a little bit of a fight here. With the 12 of Jackson Crowder all over his bumper, side by side down the front straightaway. Brandy Richardson, Zane Scott going to do battle. Richardson to the inside. Big move by Ty Bass. He slid that car square through turn one. How about this one, folks? Blake Cisneros has all, already worked his way back up to the seventh position.
Top four or five cars getting settled out here. Let's head back in the field just a little bit. Pick up the move inside by the five of Cole Johnson. He wants 11th from Jamie Elam. He'll get the job done too off of turn number four. Nice pass that time by Cole Johnson. Setting his sights now on Sean O'Neill as O'Neill goes to battle with Trevor Roosh. Roosh holds on to the spot for now. Johnson gets around O'Neill to the inside entering turn three. Nice green flag run developing here. We're gonna pick up back at the front of the field. Bumgarner and Crowder are at it again, this time for second. Little bit of a slide almost there in turn four. Bumgarner gonna cross them back over down to the inside. Let's show you the numbers here, time differences. Man, these cars are all within these two cars. This is the battle for second between Crowder and Bumgarner. They're within about a tenth of a second of each other in lap times. Field gonna get ready to put lap number 40 up on the scoreboard. Front of the field, the battle settled down just a hair. Just back a little bit, here's Blake Cisneros trying to catch up to the back bumper of Zane Scott as they work into turns one and two. Cisneros gonna take a little bit of a higher line. Big drive off the corner. He's gonna look inside of Scott going into three. Discretion, the better part of Valor for the driver of the 37. He lets Cisneros through, lives to fight another lap. This is gonna be about the second closest battle on the racetrack right now as Scott Fritz and Trevor Roosh are gonna duel side by side. Give the spot to the number 28, Texaco Haviland Ford to Scott Fritz up to 10th. 42 of 150 laps on the scoreboard. We'll make that 43 here in just a second. Oh, a little bit of trouble for Jackson Crowder. He goes around, caution flag is out. Trouble for Jackson Crowder. Let's get you the replay here. See what happened to the 12 of Jackson Crowder. Oh, clips the outside wall hard into the inside retaining wall. Remember, no safer barriers here either, folks. That one hurts. Or at least it would have anyway. <laughs> so Jackson Crowder. With a pretty banged up race car, you can see there damage all at the front end, the right rear quarter, also jacked up on that machine. I would assume you'll see the number 12 of Jackson Crowder head to the pits. In fact, we've got live pit action here. Jackson Lewis gonna lead the field down pit road. They're gonna make their first stop of the race. Sean O'Neill electing to stay out. Don't expect any seven or eight second pit stops here. Couple of cars getting off a pit lane early. We'll see who's gonna cycle back through to the front of the field. Yep, it's gonna be Jackson Lewis. Two cars electing to stay out. Let's get you the pit stop times here. O'Neill and Vigant stay out. 23.4 seconds for four Goodyear Racing Eagles. And two cans of Unical 76 fuel for Jackson Lewis in third, 23.1 seconds for Mike Bumgarner in fourth. Ty Bass is gonna roll off and restart in fifth, 22.1 seconds. Sixth place, Brandy Richardson Stopped for 22.3 seconds. Cisneros, Johnson, Fritz, Scott, everybody making pit stops here. But the big move, let's show you the stint length. There it is. O'Neill and Vigan. neither of those cars have stopped yet. 
and they are going to restart at the front of the field. O'Neill and that number 16 Dairy Queen Blizzard. Maybe not storming his way to the front, but doing it through pitch strategy. Currently in second is going to be the number 22 of Kurt Weigand. So interesting call here at the front of the field. Probably the biggest thing is going to be how these tires are going to hold up. They didn't get enough help behind them to hold up the leaders a ton. I would imagine after, as we see the first, oh, one car getting the wave around, making contact with Vigan in the 22. That'll be interesting to see how these tires are going to hold up. Should see the pace car turn in this time. Yes, we do. Green flag back in the air. It was a good start for O'Neill. Vigan going to fight back to the outside, but he's not going to have anything for Jackson Lewis to the inside. Oh, and Vi O'Neill slides up the racetrack. New race leader Jackson Lewis up to the front of the field. Three wide. Ty Bass stuffs it right up the gut. He's going to get the job done off the corner. Oh, big contact. Hard in the inside wall for Ty Bass. Trouble as well. Caution flag back out again. That was Mike Bumgarner, I believe, also making pretty heavy contact. Race leaders in trouble as we hit the one-third mark here in the hills of North Carolina. Let's get you the instant replay here, show you what happened to Ty Bass. <laughs> Off the corner, Bumgardner. I don't know that he slid high, but it was a huge hit for Ty Bass. In fact, several cars involved in that one. See if we can't pick up. Let's see, Jason Rexing also having issues in the number nine. The accident happened way ahead of him. Not sure what happened there to the number nine. Came to almost came to a stop, but he's able to continue on. So we'll get back to live coverage here because still have one car that has not stopped. That's the 16 of Sean O'Neill. He may try to ride this thing out to the halfway point and do this on one stop. Currently in the pits. Ty Bass, he is just at pit exit. Cole Johnson comes back out on the racetrack as well as Kurt Weigand. Coming back into the pits is going to be the 14 at Caleb Hall. Brandy Richardson in the 43 showing as out of the race now. Pretty clean race so far. Caleb Hall in 17th. The first car one lap down. Blake Cisneros has made two stops. Currently running in the third position. He last stopped with all the other leaders on lap number 44. Ty Bass up to 14th. That's where he's going to restart after being involved in that incident. A little bit of a short field tonight. I mean, not too short. Total of 19 cars took the green flag. And with the vast majority of them still on the lead lap. Definitely some beat up race cars though. Lights are out on the pace car. We're gonna go back to green. Lewis and Bumgarner are gonna make up row number one. Cisneros and Sean O'Neill in row number two. Zane Scott, Scott Fritz in row three. Sean Hensley, Jackson Crowder, row number four. Jamie Elam, Clayton Ward, row five. Pace car gonna be diving off here in just a second.
Green flag back in the air. We are racing again. Good start for Lewis. He's going to lead the field into turn one. Bumgarner slides up just a little bit high. Sean O'Neill all over the back bumper of Blake's as Narrows loses a little bit in turns one and two. He's going to have Zane Scott looking to his inside. Those old tires are just not going to hold up here for Sean O'Neill. The big question basically now is how far can he make this last? And can he get ahead doing it on one fewer pit stop than everybody else? Move up the middle by the number 12 of Jackson Crowder. Three wide off at turn number four. Give the spot to Crowder over O'Neill. Now he's going to put Scott Fritz under attack. Crowder right up to the back bumper of Fritz going into three and four. This is going to be the tightest battle on the racetrack. A little bit further back in the pack. Another side-by-side -side duel as well. That's going to be Ty Bass and Sean Hensley. We'll stay right up here, though. Saw a little bit of smoke. No caution flag yet. Here comes Sean O'Neill fighting back to the outside. Ty Bass going to get around them to the inside. Caution flag is out. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Trouble towards the front of the field for Blake Cisneros. Cisneros got a big run off the corner. Oh, man, same as we saw before. Pounds the outside wall, comes to a stop inside along that concrete wall separating the pit road from the racing surface. We are back under the caution flag. Rapidly approaching the halfway point. Jackson Lewis still leading over Mike Bumgarner. Zane Scott, Jackson Crowder, Scott Fritz up to the top five. Crowder involved in that last caution flag. He's made two stops, last stopping on lap number 44. Ty Bass might be one to watch here in this silver number three. He last stopped on lap number 51. So he's going to have about seven lap fresher tires than the rest of the field. We'll see how that one's going to come into play here as we get ready to go back to green flag racing. All in all, pretty good show so far. Got to say again, a huge thank you to Trevor Roosh, Dynamic Designs. Find them on Facebook, at Dynamic Designs, for helping to put this whole racing event on here. Also, Connor Germain organizing this whole show. Really appreciate your efforts, Connor, and getting in contact with us here to put it up on the National Racing Network tonight. Also got to say a big thank you to all of our sponsors, including Hyper Racing. You can find them online at hyperracing.com. Also, Hot Shoe Racewear. Make sure you check out Alan Grace and his whole team. Fantastic work that these guys do. Actually putting together some promotional materials for us here at the National Racing Network. Make sure you search Facebook for Hot Shoe Racewear. I believe you can also find them online at hotshoeracewear.com. And the Slide Up Podcast. Three Americans and a Kiwi, I believe is what the logo says now. Aaron Bollinger, Joey Amantia, Christian Bruno, three American 600 micro sprint drivers, and Troy Pennington from New Zealand putting together a really neat little dirt racing podcast got to say a huge thank you to those guys as well for your support lights are out on the pace car we're going to go back to green Bumgarner and lewis row one crowder and scott row two fritz and bass row three o'neill hensley row four ward and roosh row number five pace car is in already here in a little bit of beating and banging Green flags back in the air, and we are racing again. Good start for 
Lewis, he's going to be your ace leader into turn one. Bumgarner going to fight back on the outside. Man, we got five cars under a blanket for the race lead off of two. Top two gets settled down, but that is just not the case. A little bit further back, Ty Bass trying to catch up to Jackson Crowder. Bass in the three. Crowder in the 12. Bass sails it off really hard into turns one and two. Oh, a little bit of left side loving from Scott Fritz. That's going to drop Ty Bass back in the field. We got a side-by-side -side battle for the race lead as well. Bumgarner and Lewis going to drag race down the front straight away. Lap 68 on the scoreboard. Lewis able to hold the momentum high off a of one and two. Bumgarner will have the position advantage in turns three and four, and he's going to bring Jackson Crowder with him to the inside. New leader, Mike Bumgarner. Lewis and Crowder are going to fight door to door now for a second. Bumgarner's hoping to see those two duel for a couple of laps, possibly check out just a little bit. You're seeing that happen. Call the gap three car lengths this time by the start finish line as lap number 70 goes up on the board. Top three, settle it down. We'll pick up the battle back in the field. Here's Ty Bass and Sean O'Neill. Bass, 51 lap newer tires than O'Neill. He gets the job done off in turn four. O'Neill's gonna fall back into the clutches now of Scott Fritz. Fritz looks to the inside off a of one and two. Nothing going quite yet. Blake Cisneros is gonna challenge Fritz to the inside in three and four. Oh, a little bit of contact. The 16. Oh, I thought he saved it. Comes to a stop. Caution flag is out. Trouble for the 16 of Sean O'Neill. Check it out on the Hyper Racing Instant Replay. Little bit of a shot in the rear from the 28. What a piece of driving by Scott O'Neill not to absolutely wad that up. Excuse me, Sean O'Neill to not wad that race car up entirely. See if we can't get the onboard look for that one. Heard the contact, gets it backed up, and he will pull away. So we'll get back to live racing here. The 16 now making his first pit stop. Tell you what though, that might not be the worst call ever for Sean O'Neill, so long as he can get out on the lead lap, looks like he's gonna be scored one lap down. Heading in pit side is the number seven of Jackson Lewis. The Miller American machine's gonna make his way down to the attention of his pit crew. Crew comes out right side of the car, should go up in the air here. Yep, there it goes. Right side, Goodyear Racing Eagles. Crew will head around to the left side, get the left side up in the air. Two more heading on to the left. Four tires, two cans of Unical 76 racing fuel. Jackson Lewis makes his way off of pit road, 23.95 seconds. With the slop here, this is actually right at the halfway point. Lap 75 on the board right now. They'll get the cross flags this time by the start finish line. For the old NASCAR fans here, we'll throw, we'll start name dropping here. Harold Kinder up on the flag stand tonight. The late Harold Kinder, I guess. Harold Kinder and Doyle Ford, long, long time starters for the NASCAR Cup Series. That number 97 machine in its heyday piloted by Darrell Waltrip and Neil Bonnet out of the Junior Johnson Racing Stables. 
those cars were almost unbeatable in the early 1980s. Especially when you came to North Wilkesboro. This is Junior Johnson helped put North Wilkesboro Speedway on the map. Caution lights are out. We are going to go back to racing. Give a shout. Clayton Ward and Jamie Elam running third and fourth. Jackson Rexing, Benjamin Easler going to make up row number three. Oh, the nine does not go. Green flag's back in the air. We're racing again. Jackson Crowder, a little bit of a network glitch there. He's going to come back in clean. Clayton Ward, Jamie Elam going to battle side by side off at of turn number two. Give the spot to Elam down the back straightaway. Benjamin Easler starting to catch up to Ward in the 55. Blake Cisneros going to look to the inside of the 0-2 down the front straightaway. Here's Ty Bass in the three as well. Good six, seven car battle. Oh, they're almost three wide right back behind them. Pick that duel up just a little bit. There's Jackson Lewis already up to 11th. Good battle down the back straightaway. Caution flag is out. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Caution is out, I believe. That one's going to be trouble for Sean O'Neill. Let's see what happened. To the number 16, Dairy Queen Blizzard. Actually, that was the last caution. Let's get you the replay from this one. Sean Hensley having trouble in the 23. Tried to send it up the gut three wide. Oh, he got hit from behind by the 16, hard into the outside wall. Several cars piling in behind them. Jackson, Rex, and Caleb Hall. Hard, hard hit for the number 23. See, we can't get you the right rear suspension camera here on the 23 is Sean Hensley. Oh, big hit from the nine. The 14 of Caleb Hall piling in as well. Back at the front of the field, several cars electing to make pit stops on that last caution, now cycling their way forward. Mike Bumgarner, Jackson Crowder, staying out on the racetrack. Let's show you the last lap for the pit stops. Bumgarner and Crowder stopping on lap number 44, Cisneros, Bass, Scott, and Roosh stopping on 73, 74 for Lewis. So all kind of under that last caution. That'll give you an idea of where everybody is stopped here as we are under the slide up podcast caution flag. 83 laps in the books. Mike Bumgarner, still your race leader. Hard charger so far. We'll pick him up. That is Ty Bass in the number three. Up 14 positions since the drop of the green flag. He is going to restart on the outside of road number two. Row three will have Zane Scott and Trevor Roosh. Row number four, Jackson Lewis and Sean O'Neill. Pace guard is going to be making that hard left-hand turn. There it goes. Right on the hammers, Mike Bumgarner. He's going to pick up the race lead side-by-side. -side. Battle between Cisneros and Bass going into one. 
Caution, caution, caution. Yellow flag out again. Trouble. Looks like Sean O'Neill, Trevor Roosh, several cars involved with this one. Pick it up here. This was right on the drop of the green flag. Trouble for the 16 of Sean O'Neill. Just way too hard into turn one. Contact with the 23. We got a driver's meeting, turn two. Take a look at this one from the blimp cam. Keep your eye on Trevor Roosh in the 23. That's what we say when we mean drivers meeting. They are wadding up all sorts of race cars down there in turn one. So we'll see if anybody elects to pit this time. Looks like Jamie Elam, Benjamin Easler, Jackson Rexing, Kurt Weigand, all stopping on lap 81 under the last caution as the 14 is going to come around and pick up a, get his lap back. With the number of cautions that we've had, probably not too much in the way of tire degradation so far from Bumgarner and Crowder. But I mean, man, they do have a ton of laps on those tires though. Cisneros restarting in third, one of those cars that stopped on lap number 73, two cautions ago. So we'll take a look here. I believe they're going to get the one to go signal this time by. Yep, there it is. Bumgarner and Crowder on row one. Cisneros and Bass in row two. Scott and Lewis, row three. Fritz and Cole Johnson in row number four. Field makes their way off the corner. Quick start for Bumgarner. He's done it a couple of times now. Surprised Jackson Crowder hasn't looked for it. Cisneros going to battle inside a tie bass off at of turn number two. They'll be side by side down the back straight away and into three. Nice pass by Blake Cisneros. He'll get the job done. He's up to the third podium position. Ty Bass, Jackson Lewis now going to battle. Bass able to get in front of Lewis down the back straightaway. Jackson Lewis doing battle with Zane Scott. Caution flag back out on the speedway. Trouble for Kurt Weigand in the number 22. I'm surprised we haven't seen more of that. Turn four at North Wilkesboro is incredibly difficult. Oh, and then a big hit from the 16 as he tried to get straightened out. I'm surprised we haven't seen more of that because a, let's see, we'll pull the replay back up here and try to slow it down for you off the corner. Right about here, the car starts to get 
very, very light on corner exit as you transition from going up the hill in the corner off the banking to the downhill slope down the front straightaway. Really difficult transition. These cars are incredibly easy to get loose and looped around. Working lap number 96 right now, so approaching the 100 lap mark, we'll still have 50 to go. And I believe three attempts at a green-white checkered finish as well. Want to remind everybody, coming up this weekend... Saturday night, live, real-world racing action from Lanco's Clyde Martin Memorial Speedway in Newmanstown, Pennsylvania. Four divisions of micro sprints will be on the bill. The newly combined 125 and four-stroke division. Also the Sportsman, the 270s, and the Hyper Racing 600s. I think we saw it once last year, might have been two years ago. Last Saturday night, those 600s went 25 laps, clean and green. Absolutely phenomenal racing. P.J. Williams made save of the year candidate happen on night number one. He did a complete 360, kept his foot in the throttle. I don't think he lost more than two spots doing a donut on the front straightaway. T.J. Grieve picking up the win in the 600s. All in all, fantastic night of racing. Cannot wait to get back out to Lanco this weekend. Also on Sunday night, we will have round number one of the Ultimate Dirt Track Products Vintage Cup Series. Pretty similar race to what you're going to see right now. 1987 Chevrolet Monte Carlos and Ford Thunderbirds doing 150 laps here at North Wilkesboro Speedway in the NRN 150. Four more rounds coming up after that one every Sunday night at 8 o'clock for the next five weeks. Until the Independence Day holiday, you'll have Sunday night racing right here on NRN. Lights are off on the pace car. We are getting ready to go back to green. Bumgarner and Crowder on row number one. Oh, there he tried to anticipate it. Bottles up the field. Bumgarner's going to have the lead into one. Side by side, Jackson Crowder and Blake Cisneros. Ty Bass right there to join the fight as well. Fantastic duel heading into three for second. Side by side battle back there for fifth place as well. Cisneros slides up the racetrack. Almost makes contact with Jackson Crowder. Caution flag is out. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Trouble on the speedway towards the back of the pack. Jamie Elam having issues in the 124. See if we can see what happened here. Oh, 28 locked up the right front. Little bit of contact. Gets that car squared away and turned back in the right direction. We figured we, it was one of those that was just too obvious. When Mike Bumgarner was going to try to bottle the field up on the restart, he did it that time. Blake Cisneros in, now running in the second position. Jackson Crowder went to make the jump. Bumgarner didn't go. So then with Crowder having to get hard on the brakes, in fact, let's pull this one up here. Let's watch this restart again. You could see Bumgarner just didn't go when Crowder thought he was going to. And that let Blake Cisneros get down to the inside. So we'll go back to live coverage here. Show you the pitch strategy. We'll show you what lap they stopped on. Bumgarner still last stop on lap number 44. He's well past where he would have made a second stop if it was going to be based on fuel length. 44 laps. They're now 
turning lap 104. So he's put an additional 60 laps on those tires. Cisneros running in second, 25 lap newer tires. Crowder and Ty Bass doing a little door banging back there. So that'll give you an idea of the stint lengths. That is a huge difference. Crowder in third, also on 60 lap tires. So this will be interesting to see how the outside lane is going to be able to fare on this one as we go back to green. field should have gotten the one to go signal yes they did so we are going to get ready to go back to racing here I want to thank everybody who's tuning in on the YouTube channel as well also on the website nationalracingnetwork.com green flag back in the air good start for Bob Gardner Outside lane just was not ready to go. Blake Cisneros, he's going to be right on the bumper. Oh, contact from Crowder. Cisneros almost goes around. Hard hit into the outside wall. Yellow flag is out again. Probably a little bit optimistic there by Jackson Crowder. We'll get you the replay. Crowder just about had him clean. I'll tell you what. Not a bad move from Jackson Crowder. Tiniest little bit of contact will absolutely send these cars around. In fact, we'll give you the slow-mo on this one as well because right here in the corner is where the car starts to get very light as you go the other direction. The same issue you have off of four, you kind of have in the middle of one. The slightest bit of contact almost sent the 60 all the way around. Seems like the, the front couple, couple of cars are in this perpetual shuffle of things just a little bit. The only car that's not moving a ton is Mike Bumgarner at the front of the field. We'll see where timing and scoring decides to sort everybody out here. A couple of cars making pit stops under the last caution. Scott Fritz, Benjamin Easler, Jamie Elam also stopping. This caution saw the five of Cole Johnson and the 37 of Zane Scott come into the pits. Looks like that is the 60 of Blake Cisneros. He is going to come down pit road. With one fast repair, some of these cars may not have used it yet. Aerodynamics are not that critical. Oh, Cisneros overshot the pit box. Backs it up. Crew's going to come around to the, we'll see, looks like this may only be a damage repair for the 60 of Cisneros. Basically just time it out. Also see the 37 of Zane Scott in the pits as well. Scott on his way out, Cisneros on his way out as well. I believe he beat the pace car off the pit road. It looks like he did. So he'll be able, should be able to come back around. Have a little bit more time if he chooses to use it. 
Car doesn't look too bad comparatively. So back here at the front of the field, lights are out on the pace car. Mike Bumgarner, Ty Bass this time, going to make up the front row. Pace car's in, green flag's back in the air. We are racing again. Here comes Jackson Crowder looking to the inside of Bass going into one. They're going to get through it clean this time. Off the corner, they stay side by side. Bass going to hold on to the spot. Crowder tries to look inside off the corner. Checks up just a hair so he doesn't get into the back of the three. Here's Jackson Lewis now looking to the outside of Crowder. Crowder going to dip inside a Ty Bass for the runner-up spot. Lap 115 going up on the scoreboard. Good three-car battle for second. Bass, Crowder, and Lewis. Crowder's still looking inside of Bass. Just not able to get the pass done yet. Oh, they almost make contact. This duel is letting Mike Bumgardner check out. The lead is up to right about one second. Ty Bass finally able to get around Jackson Crowder. He'll hold on to second. Jackson Lewis now going to go to work on the number 12. Oh, almost an off-track excursion there for the 12. Yellow caution flag is out. Don't see a reason for the incident popping up here on our windows just yet. Looks like Blake Cisneros may have had a penalty assessed. We'll see here. Multiple cars coming down pit road. Let's check the stops on this one. Ty Bash, Jackson Lewis, Clayton Ward, Trevor Roosh, all in the pit area. Right sides go up all on the number three. Good wrench Chevrolet flying aces go to work. Right side down. Left side's going to go up here. Four Goodyear Racing equals two cans of Unical 76 Racing Fuel. Cars down off the Jackson away. 20.32 second stop for Ty Bass. Quick stop as well for Jackson Lewis. He's out in 20.03 seconds. Now Mike Bumgarner is going to come into the pits. He's going to bring Jackson Crowder, Caleb Hall with him as well. Not sure of the – either this is a really odd strategy call by Mike Bumgarner and Jackson Crowder or the pits weren't open yet. And everybody that stopped before him could be penalized. We'll see what's going to go on here. Bumgarner, right side's up in the air. They're already done. The Junior Johnson team doing quick work on that machine. Around to the left side, same thing. Four tires, two cans of fuel. He's going to be down and away here in right around 20 seconds. Bumgarner off of pit lane, 22.85 seconds. Jackson Crowder, ninth, 22.53 seconds. So we, it looks like, are going to have a new race leader, Jackson Lewis. In the number eight, the Miller American Bobby Hill and Junior colors. And the good wrench Chevrolet, a Ty Bass, will start to his outside once we go back to green. Clayton Ward going to restart in the third position in the number five, 605 racing entry. Starting, restarting fourth outside of row two will be Brandy Richardson in the number 43. The Valvoline, Neil Bonnet colors on that machine. The 23, the old Daryl Waltrip, I believe, I want to say 1981 for the paint scheme on that number 23 Mountain Dew machine. To his outside will be the legendary Texaco Haviland number 28. Real World piloted by Davey Allison. Tonight, piloted by Scott Fritz. 
Caution lights are out on the pace car. We're going to go back to green. New race leaders, Jackson Lewis, Ty Bass, going to lead them to green. We are underway in racing again. Ward and Richardson going to go side by side into one. Ward able to hold on to the spot. They're going to battle a little bit further back. Here comes Jackson Crowder and Mike Bumgarner. They're going to get to the inside of Hensley, get the pass made in turns three and four. So we are approaching 25 to go. They are already catching up to the 43 of Richardson. Richardson moves to the inside of Clayton Ward. Oh, Richardson almost goes around. Contact with Jackson Crowder. Up into the outside wall. Looks like we're going to stay green for right now. I believe we will. 26 to go. Jackson Crowder, Mike Bumgarner having their charge for the race lead stunted. Here's Jackson Lewis. He has three quarters of a second over Ty Bass as they make their way off the corner. There's Clayton Ward in third. Fourth. Jackson Crowder's already made up a bunch of ground. Mike Bumgarner getting around Sean Hensley. These two have been fast the entire race. The question now is, is there enough time? Oh, yes, there will be. Because here comes the 55 award getting really loose in three and four. Almost got into the outside wall. Again, we stay green. There's the gap between race leader Jackson Lewis and Ty Bass caution on the speedway. Yellow flag is out, trouble for Clayton Ward. Yep, same issue we had last time. This time, 55 gets all the way around. Or at least far enough that the auto detect system in iRacing through the yellow flag. So that's going to put us back under caution. <laughs> Only nine cars remaining on the lead lap. Zane Scott, the first car, one lap down, and he is actually two laps down. Brady Richardson now being shown a total of six laps down, excuse me, five for Brandy Richardson. Scott Fritz, another lap back. Benjamin Easler. In fact, several of those cars that are a lap down are currently not turning laps, so we are down to not too many cars remaining in the race here. Clayton Ward, Zane Scott in the pit area right now. Jackson Lewis, still your race leader. He stopped on lap 118. In fact, we can show you the laps that everybody stopped on here. Everybody stopped pretty much anyway under the last caution with the exception of Blake Cisneros. Stopped on lap number 110. So everybody at the front of the field is on pretty much the same pitch strategy at this point. And Cisneros in ninth is being scored one lap down. Want to make sure we mention driver, the number, uh, let's see. He's not the number eight. At least I don't think he is anyway. Yeah, the 23, Trevor Roosh. Dynamic Designs, helping to put on this Dynamic Designs 150 here from the North Wilkesboro Speedway. You are watching on the National Racing Network. Got to say a big thank you to Trevor and his whole team for helping make this event possible tonight. Field's gotten the one to go signal. 
Lewis and Bass going to be on row number one. Jackson Crowder, Sean Hensley on row number two. Actually, Crowder and Bumgarner in row two. Hensley and Roosh, row three, row four. Caleb Hall, Clayton Ward. Last car remaining in the field. He's, lap, he's a couple of laps down is Zane Scott. Blake Cisneros now out of the race. Green flag back in the air. That was a good start for Jackson Lewis. Ty Bass able to cut off Jackson Crowder down the straightaway. Crowder and Bumgarner going to renew their duel off the corner. Crowder looks to the inside of Bass in three and four. Ty Bass slides way up the racetrack. Crowder's through. Bumgarner to the inside. He'll get the spot. We are down to 16 to go. Caution flag is out. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Trouble for Caleb Hall in the number 14 machine. <laughs> That's the spin we talked about, not seeing a ton of. Quick loop around, back on the throttle. iRacing sees the spin and throws the yellow flag. Let's actually see if we can't go cockpit cam on this one. Listen for the throttle. That is just how sudden that will happen to a driver. Nice soft application of the throttle. You're kind of you're rolling the egg under your foot and all of a sudden, what? And Bang, there goes the car around. So Caleb Hall is going to make his way into the pits. Ty Bass in the pits as well in the number three. Crew already around to the left-hand side of that one. This might not be the worst call ever, only because you have so few cars left in the race. 34.05 seconds on the stop for Caleb Hall. Or excuse me, for Ty Bass. Caleb Hall's stop, he comes out in 28.05 seconds. Lap 138 going to go up on the scoreboard. 139 will be the next lap they're going to turn. So we are down to 11 laps to go. Seems like we say this every race. you got to get while the getting's good. If you're Jackson Crowder and Mike Bumgardner, you've got to make this restart. Really, really work for you. If Lewis is able to get out to the restart, you can't guarantee you're going to have another shot with this few cars left in the race. Field's gotten the one to go signal. They're going to get the green flag this time. Lewis and Crowder on row one. Roosh and Bumgarner row two. Bass and Hensley row three. Caleb Hall, Zane Scott, the last two cars remaining on the lead lap. In fact, the last two cars remaining in the race. We are down to eight and a 10 lap shootout for the win. Green flag back in the air. Great start for Lewis. He's going to have a car length leading to one. Oh, trouble. Bumgarner goes around down the front straightaway. Caution flag back out on the speedway. Mike Bumgarner goes around hard into the inside wall. Might have had a little bit of contact. Oh, he got drilled right at the end of that one, too. So Bumgarner going to have to come into the pits.
So with the field circulating under the yellow flag, 144 on the board, 145 is what they're working right now. Another caution will put us in to green white checker territory. Six laps remaining here at North Wilkesboro. Looks like Mike Bumgarner out of the race. Also the 23 is Sean Hensley. So we are gonna be down to six cars remaining running here. That was a huge hit for Mike Bumgarner. Let's uh, take a look here. Let's go on board. <laughs> That one's almost like he felt the hit. That was pretty incredible there. <laughs> so Fields got the one to go signal. Lewis and Crowder row one, Bass and Roosh row two, Hall and Scott row number three. Five to go now, it'll be four at the start finish line. Green flag back out on the speedway. Lewis got a good restart. He's gonna hold the lead over Jackson Crowder off at of turn number two. Some of these drivers are probably worried about the incident point count as well. That may have what caught out Mike Bumgarner, in fact. Only 20 incident points allowed. You really couldn't wreck the car too much or else you'd run the risk of a disqualification. We'll see, I don't, we can't see how many incident points they have, but Jackson Crowder may be having to really tiptoe around this place. Ty Bass runs third. We're down to two to go. Lewis holds the lead off at two. Crowder gonna look to the inside. We'll see if he's gonna make the move in three. Lewis gives him a bunch of room. White flag is out, one to go here in the dynamic design 150 at North Wilkesboro. Jackson Lewis holds the race lead off a of turn two. Jackson Crowder gonna run in second. He's gonna make the move inside of three. Oh, here comes the push from Ty Bass. Drag race down the front straightaway. Checkered flag is out, give it to Jackson Lewis. Jackson Crowder comes home second. Ty Bass third. Ty Bass was gonna try to push Jackson Crowder to the win. Fantastic race finish there. We'll show you the results here. Jackson Lewis gets the race win over Jackson Crowder, Ty Bass, Caleb Hall, Trevor Roosh rounds out the top five. Zane Scott, Mike Bumgarner, Sean Hensley, Clayton Ward, and Blake Cisneros is your top ten. Brandy Richardson, Scott Fritz, Jackson Rexing, Cole Johnson, Benjamin Easler back to 15th. Six, er, yeah, 16th, Jamie Elam, 17th, Kurt Vigan, 18th, Austin O'Neill, 19th, Austin Smith, holy cow, 19th, goes to Sean O'Neill. So your race winner is going to light them up here down in the front straightaway. Let's see if we can't pick up your race winner here. Talk to him while he's burning the place down. Jackson Lewis, Chris Graham in the NRM booth. Do you have a copy on us? Yes, sir, I do. All right, buddy. That was a heck of a race. What did you think of the pit strategy call by uh, Mike Bumgarner and Jackson Crowder to stop a lap behind you guys towards the end there? Uh, I don't I don't think that was really part of their plan. You know, uh, I kind of came into that caution knowing that I was going to pit no matter what, uh, just because I know these tires fell, fell off really, really fast. So I think they just didn't expect us to pit at that time, and they knew if they didn't pit, they were just going to be, you know, sitting ducks. So they figured if that was their only shot was to pit a lap after. 
Yeah, it, it made for an interesting call up here for sure. We've only had these cars for about a week now. What's your impression of them? I think they're a blast to drive and a complete handful, unlike a lot of the cars in this sim. Yeah, these, these things are the most difficult car I've ever driven on the sim, and they are the most fun possible. I mean, I don't they're just a great time. I mean, you get loose and you can barely save it and it's, they're always loose and it's just, it's fun. It's just a good. Yeah. These things have been a blast. So congratulations on the race win tonight. Who do you got to thank? Yeah. I just got to thank uh team hashtag pay the bills. Uh, got to thank Connor for putting this all on you guys for uh, broadcasting. It. That's about it. All right, buddy, like we said, congratulations on the win. We'll drag you back out here and see if we can't find – see who else we have here. See if we can't pick up Jackson Crowder and Ty Bass here. All right, Jackson, Chris Graham in the NRM booth. You have us? Yeah, I got you. What's up? Uh, not too much, brother. That was, a, uh, that was a heck of a race there. You were dueling with Mike Bumgarner most of the race. Ultimately, did it come down to you guys having to pit a lap later than everybody else? Yeah, well, uh, me and Mike were kind of talking about that. I was worried Blake was going to hit me, so I was running from him, and I didn't even see pit road was open. <laughs> and uh, that run before, we run 40 lap order tires, and we were doing just fine staying one, too. So I don't know how much tires really mattered or how much they fell off. I wasn't looking at lap times, but that probably didn't do us any favors for sure. Yeah, I'll, I mean, you put in a heck of a show. You came back up. You started second. You finished second. But, man, you kind of bounced around all over the place. Yeah, my me and my buddy Blake got together. He, he says I wrecked him. I say he jacked up. I don't know. He, he came and hit me under caution. If I would have had that last four X left, I might have been able to make it a little bit more of a show there on the last lap. But I was going to take second and get disqualified. So I was going to say, that was – we can't see. That's the one piece of data iRacing doesn't give us. And I'm watching that and I'm saying – I think he's sitting on enough that if he gets the four X, he's going to go over. Yeah. Was that yeah. playing into your thought process? Yeah, for sure. I, I don't know how I used to be weird sometimes with four X's. So I didn't, I just, I was rather not hit him at all. Take the second money than try and wreck us both for the win and some random dude win it, you know? Yeah. I hear you on that one, brother. All right. Who do you got to thank for the uh, support tonight? Um, I got to thank Connor for putting the race on. That was Pretty cool, and a uh, slide job motorsports is a new team we got going on. But uh, not much other than that. All right, buddy. Well, congratulations on the second place run here. We'll drag you back out. See if we can't pick up Ty Bass. Ty, you have us? Yes, sir. All right, man. You may have been the star of the show tonight, gaining 15 spots, easily the hard charger. But that was not nearly as easy as just drive through the field and pick them off one by one. Oh, yeah, for sure not. At this uh, track especially, this type of car is kind of harder to drive than uh, the standard A car that's up here. So, uh, yeah, it was a little hard, but they kept crashing. They made it a little easier. I was going to say, we just talked to, to Jackson Crowder about that. What are your thoughts on the car? We've only had it for, I mean, it's been less than a week now. Uh, how much are you enjoying them, and is this going to be a regular for you? Oh, yeah, it'll definitely be a regular. I think it's a lot of fun so far. Um I've been doing a lot of the Daytona and Talladega stuff that is on, like, the official page, and that's been a lot of fun, too. So, uh, definitely a hit so far. All right. Congratulations, Ty, on the Hard Charger Award. And who do you got to thank? Yeah, I just got to thank everybody back at Colin Keister Driving School, um, Knobloch, Bowden, O'Connor. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. All right, buddy. Congratulations again on the spot. We'll drag you back out here. And uh, let's see if we can't pick up. Uh, let's see. Who am I looking for now? You know, let's see if we can't talk to Connor Germain here. Connor, Chris Graham, you have us? Yeah, I got you. All right, brother. You sent us a message, I guess, late last night, wanting to know if we could put the show on here for you. And all in all, you guys wound up with a pretty good race. Whole bunch of DQs due to incidents, which is not unsurprising at a place like North Wilkesboro. Uh, and a great finish to wrap it all up. Yeah, yeah, it was a good race. Uh, to be honest, this is the first race of many we're going to have. Uh, this isn't no technical series. We're just kind of putting on these shows to, for people to have fun and people to get into. Had a lot of flaws tonight, but it ended up on a green flag, so I'm happy with it. 
Uh, I mean, there's a lot of flaws with this race. We're going to try and fix. We're going to get together and, and fix these races. We're going to have a lot more. Um, I'd like to thank you guys for coming out and doing this such last notice. Uh, I appreciate it. The stream looked very good. I'd like to say uh, thanks. Uh, thank Dynamic Designs for helping out with a lot of the a lot of the stuff we have, and uh, 605 Racing for sponsoring a lot of cars. Yeah, that was very cool to see. Uh, neat artwork you guys had put up, so kudos to Dynamic Design. And uh, all in all, not a bad night, man. Appreciate you having us out, and, and we're looking forward to doing more of these. Yeah, thanks for coming, man. I really appreciate it. Thanks for everyone for watching. All right. Well, let's try Connor out, and we're going to bring one more interview in here. Let's see. Caleb Hall, do you have a copy on us? Yes, sir. All right, buddy. We talked about this paint scheme. Somebody commented on it right as we got on the air. You ran a, you, a very special tribute scheme tonight. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, I mean, I woke up this morning, you know, had a plan to run this race, and Dad texted me, told me to call him. So I called him, and he said, hey, I said, what you need? And he said, uh, like, colonoscopy came back bad. I have cancer in my colon. And I just started bawling my eyes out, and about – around seven o'clock uh asked landon i was like can you uh whip up a scheme real quick with what i have an idea on he said sure and uh you know we had cancer sucks on it we had an underbird tribute to alan kawicki and you know a lot of cancer patients are underdogs when they get cancer so we put underbird on the fr underbird on the front of the car and you know we wrecked early we also had to ride in the back and that last green flag i told jackson and michael i said i'm going i don't care what happens if i x out i x out <laughs> I, that it was funny we were talking about you keeping an eye on you throughout the race because we did have some people commenting that they were watching and I, all in all man you put on a heck of a show you gained five spots from where you started so how was the race for you it seemed like you were always getting caught up in other people's junk uh well with jackson and my blake around mid-pack you know they tell me when the wrecks were happening so i would try to come to a stop and you know, usually with Elwok, the brakes up and roll down to the bottom. And uh, they just, for some odd reason, they all came to the top. And we kept getting collected and collected and collected. So finally, I just slocked the brakes up and came to a complete stop. I mean, the wrecks were just crazy. Like, I mean, there was like a few people. I saw getting one wreck and they all just vanished because they X'd out. But, I mean, the cars, they drove good. You guys, I mean, more wheel, more speed. It's kind of how they run. Yeah, that was one of the things that I found really interesting was it, these cars. I mean, I've I've driven them a little bit. In fact, actually, I've turned a bunch of laps here at North Wilkesboro. They are so loose. They are so quick to get loose. But you you can recover it. How fun is it to drive a car like that? Well, we tested all week once we saw it was posted and. Uh, we got in here today, and we were told that they did a little setup work on it. What they just basically lowered their air pressure on that rear to make them snugger, but they they could still snap out pretty easy. And yeah, I mean, shoot, I mean, off of four at one time, it just got too loose. I grabbed the brakes, but it's too late. When we came down, we got some repairs, and we went back out there. And I mean, they're fun to drive. They're like tanks, though, and you know, it might be eighty-seven. You think still bodies, and they're tough, but they ain't they, they ain't that tough compared to that North Wilkesboro wall. I, yeah, I was going to say, they were uh, one of the guys that we were talking, I was in a server with, said, in these cars, brakes are more of a suggestion. <laughs> and I just couldn't help but laugh at that, because that's exactly what it feels like. It, it's like you're off the throttle at the start-finish line, you kind of coast a little, you you break them fairly gently, and then you really lean on them. It, it's a very yeah. different rhythm to driving this car. Yeah, when uh, me and my buddies, we hopped in a hosted thing the other day when we first got them. We were like, these things drive so terrible. Then we figured it out. We're like, hey, I'll be honest, they're not that bad. They feel like a real street stock in real life. And, uh, you know, you can either let it roll through the center and uh, get back on it or heavy brake and just gas it on out. There's different driving styles for this track and especially this car. And it just makes for great racing. Yeah, that, that was a lot of fun tonight. So. Well, we want to say this. Best wishes to your dad. You're, you're going to be in our thoughts and prayers and, and your family. And congratulations. That was a heck of a run tonight. All right. Thank you. All right. That is Caleb Hall. And with that, we're going to wrap up our coverage here from the North Wilkesboro Speedway. I want to remind everybody, 
Saturday night, real world racing action, Clyde Martin Memorial Speedway. You can expect that stream to come up, uh, I would say, probably 645-ish. Uh, we'll update everyone throughout the day on what the the timelines are going to look like on that one. Sunday night, uh, we will have the Ultimate Dirt Track Products Vintage Cup Series, 150 laps right here from North Wilkesboro Speedway. Uh, really, really looking forward to that one. We will have a server up tomorrow night, uh, and that one will feature a Bell prize pack to the race winner on that one, courtesy of Jonathan Lewis and everybody down there at uh, Ultimate Dirt Track Products. So looking forward to that one. We got some real-world racing. We got some iRacing coming up for you. Really going to be a fun weekend. Thank you, everybody, for joining us here. You have been watching the Dynamic Design 150 right here on the National Racing Network.